am a junior in the college studying international studies and global health. I'm here to present on Chondrodendron somatosum. It's in the Menisperaceae family, and it's commonly known as Curare, Pareda, or Empty Bosca. Um, <clears throat> so, Chondrodendron tomentosum is primarily utilized to make Curare, which is a poison traditionally used in hunting and tribal warfare in the Amazon. Um, and it's locally known, like I said, as Curare Pareda or Empi Vasca, with the term Empi coming from the macerated bark that they use to extract the poison. Um, like I said before, it's a member of the Menisformaceae family, which is the Muncie family, and it's found in the rainforests of the western Amazon. Um, so it's a liana, and that means that it's a strong woody stemmed vine, um, and it's rooted in the soil, so it grows slowly up through the forest canopy, and it can be over two inches thick. Um, and it's known as Pareda brava, which means wild vine in Portuguese, and that's because it's really like twisted and kind of rugged looking, and it's you know pretty crazy, I guess. Um, and as you can see, um, like other plants of the Menisperaceae family, it has really big heart-shaped leaves. And on the bottom of these leaves, it's, there's like a dense white hair coating. Um, and then, as you can see over there, it has small flowers. And then the fruits are like a purplish black color. They look a lot like grapes. So um, traditionally, there are uses in hunting as well as um, medicine. So it is the source of curare in Western Amazonian tribes. There's another plant for the Eastern Amazon that they get curare from. And it's deeply rooted in Tyrio's folklore. I think we watched a video um, the, on this before, but the, the story goes that there was originally a man and three animals, a howler monkey, a yellow-headed parrot, and a yellow-headed vulture. And um, the howler monkey was actually a woman in disguise, and she was eventually married to the man in her woman form. And he was out hunting one day, and he ran into an eagle. And the eagle <clears throat> showed him the Chondrodendron tomentosum plant and the recipe for curare. And um, unfortunately, he was then too quick to use his newfound weapon. And he killed all the howler monkeys in the forest, including his wife. So this tragedy kind of serves as a warning. And it's you know rooted in the folklore, so it's a cultural warning that you shouldn't be too quick to use these poisons and you shouldn't overuse them. Um, it's prepared by crushing and boiling the roots and stems and then they add in other herbaceous and animal venoms till it's a light syrupy consistency. And then it's really cool, they'll take um, piranha teeth and they'll make these grooves in their darts and arrows and let the poison soak into those. And then um, we'll use them obviously. And then medicinally, it's been used in traditional Brazilian culture to treat a variety of ailments, and that's like dropsy, madness, bruising, orchitis, and kidney stones. It's also been used as a febrifuge, an emmenagogue, and a diuretic. Um, so it has several different um, active crystalline alkaloid compounds. The most well-known of these is d 2 curare and that's the alkaloid that's responsible for the um, neuromuscular inhibiting activity. Um, it also contains um, non quaternary bases, one of which is berberine, and that's responsible for the bitter principle. Um, and then also a man named Benjamin Brody <clears throat> was initially the one who used it in a patient to test tetanus. Um, and then that was, I guess, successful, so he started using it topically as well as in the treatment of um, hydrophobia, epilepsy, and cholera. So, <clears throat> d 2 curarine works rapidly to block the nerve impulses to the muscles, which results in the muscular paralysis and flaccid muscles. Um, it's like a temporary paralysis, but you, you will die from it due to asphyxiation because it paralyzes your diaphragm muscle. Um, and it works by depressing the potential of the end plate in the neuromuscular junction. Um, it's a competitive inhibitor of acetylcholine, 
and it interferes with the feedback control as well um, by occupying the presynaptic receptors involved in acetylcholine release. Um, the margin of safety of neuromuscular transmission is 70 to 95 percent, and this means that 70 to 95 percent of receptors um, must be occupied in order to um, block the muscle action. So it only works when dr directly injected into the bloodstream, and this is because the compounds are so large and highly charged that they can't make it through the digestive tract lining and into the bloodstream. <clears throat> so um, a number of biological studies have been have been done. Um, initially, Benjamin Brody used rabbits to show that the potential for artificial ventilation to maintain life in the lungs um, after curare induced paralysis, and so like curare doesn't have an effect on the heart, and that's what that study proved. And then subsequently, uh, Claude Bernard used frog nerve muscles to prove that curare acts on the nerves rather than the muscles. Um, then Leishmaniasis and Chagas disease treatments were also studied. These are both tropical parasitic diseases, and they're really prevalent in the Amazon area. Um, so they're, they're of a high associated morbidity and mortality rate, so it's important that you know, we find new cures and treatments. Um, the problem with the current treatments is they have a high dosage rate, meaning that um, they have a high potential for resistance. And so scientists interviewed locals to see what they might use traditionally to treat Ill illnesses, and chondrodendron tomatosin was one of the many studied. And um, they prepared a crude alkaloidal extract with ethanol, and they tested it on patients. And it actually proved to be one of the best treatments for both diseases. Um, additionally, the effects of sepsis on D2-bocurarine were tested in rats. Um, they tested these on the LCA and PCA muscles. And this was in order to see the importance of differential paralysis of the laryngeal muscles caused by D2-bocurarine. They did this by inducing sepsis in rats and then removing their LCA and PCA muscles in order to run currents through them. Um, and the findings were that sepsis actually weakens the D2-bocurare neuromuscular blocking in both of the muscles. Um, clinical studies have also been conducted. Initially, it was actually a patient undergoing anesthesia and he had a severe allergic reaction. So they were really curious about this. They had to remove him from surgery. So 10 days later, they brought him back in and tested his blood, um, the histamine levels in his blood, and they were twice the amount they should have been when exposed to D2-bocurare. Um, other clinical studies have used it as a muscle relaxant um, to relieve stiff muscles caused by polio. <clears throat> um, and they also used it to treat lock, lock jaw, chorea, and um, epilepsy. But more effective treatments to all of these have been found. Um, the real success is with D2-bocurare because it was used it was used a lot as a muscle relaxant in surgery and as an anesthetic. Um, contraindications, of course, include asphyxiation. Um, the solution to this problem is artificial ventilation. Um, and then the liquid preparation's relative weakness, as I said earlier, is that it can't be absorbed through the digestive tract, so it must be injected directly into the bloodstream. And that's why um, Amazonian tribes are able to ingest the meat. Um, and there aren't really any cur current therapeutic uses because it's commonly known as a poison. Um, but synthetics have been um, developed based off D2-bocurarine, but these are obviously less complex in nature and not as multidimensional. However, they're much more controlled and safe to use. Um, and then additionally, it's still used for hunting in the Amazon, although I feel that this is a dying trend. 